We have students here who will present ideas for projects that can benefit all different parts of both our Syracuse University community and the greater Syracuse community. Almost 70 ideas were pitched over the last month. Students created videos that outlined their ideas. The 13 winning ideas were selected from a very competitive field. Each of these projects will receive a grant of up to $1,500 so that they can be completed. When you hear the word drone, what do you guys think of? It's, it's, it's kind of a scary word, isn't it? Um, we, we hear this, we, we find that people are more frightened by this word than excited, and we find this word extremely exciting. And th there's a reason. We work every day with drones, and we have seen firsthand what these incredible machines are capable of. They are capable of inspiring and revolutionizing science and art in a way that nothing in recent history has. We have seen the good these things are capable of, and we want to share it with anybody that is willing to listen. So what is the Skyworks Project? The Skyworks Project is an initiative to bring together students from all over campus under the same roof to discover what is possible both technically and socially with drone technology. There are two main components to what this project consists of. The first are the meetings. They're open to everybody. Anybody can come and learn how to fly and build. That's, we, we, want, we open our doors to everybody. It's amazing the people that show up. We had Lockheed Martin employees show up and actually ask us to speak at their event. And the second part is the team. The team behind Skyworks are some of those innovative, passionate people I've ever met. And they are constantly pushing what is possible with drone technology. We have people that are trying to put facial recognition software on the drone. We have people that are trying to make them safer, make a flying auto head that follows the phone signal of the real auto. And we also have a team, including myself, that is trying to 3D print the entire SU campus using drones to 3D scan it. I mean, this is, these are things that nobody else is doing, and we're doing it here at Syracuse University. And I, I just, I can't get, I, I always get so excited about it because it's absolutely incredible. Um, so what can, what can Skyworks do for Syracuse University? We want to put Syracuse University on the map as an authority of drone technology for the world. And I think we can do it. I mean, we have all the resources. We have the people. We have the team. We have a network of alumni that are always there for us. I mean, it, it doesn't get much better than that. And I want to take a moment to you know, thank the iSchool and Dean Liddy for sending me to NAB Las Vegas, I just got back like 16 hours ago to, exp to see what is really happening in the drone industry. And you know, I, I, at that meeting, I, I laid the groundwork for a lot of incredible partnerships with some of the number one drone companies in the world that will put Skyworks at the forefront of drone technology for the months to come. But we also discovered something there. Everything that they were showing that was cutting edge, we're already there. There's nothing new there that we didn't know about. We are there with people that are spending hundreds, if not millions of dollars on researching what's possible with drone technology. And I think Syracuse University is the place to be to push what is possible both technically and socially with drone technology. Thank you for your consideration and uh, onward and upward guys. I don't know if anyone in here is aware, but there's a huge cultural and behavioral epidemic happening all around this campus. It's happening at Fagan's, it's happening at Chuck's, really starting Whitman. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> New house and even this auditorium. It's called phone addiction. We're all guilty of it. We're humans. We love to be social. Cavemen were social with other cavemen just to, to communicate and survive with one another. Cut to today, and we're still very social human beings, but we do it through our phones. We are stuck in our screens. We go out to eat with our friends, and it's almost as if we have to Instagram a photo of our dinner just to prove we ate that day. It's ridiculous. We're living for the next status update, the next tweet. And that's why we'd like to introduce Talk. Talk is an anti-social media mobile application that allows users to engage with other users in order to disengage from their phone lives. So how's it work? It's a free app download. You create your Talk profile. Within that Talk profile, you link up all your pre-existing social media platforms. From there, you invite someone to talk with you. Chancellor Kent, for instance. So I blast out on my social media platforms. I'm talking with Chancellor Kent in the Herg Auditorium. Then I set a predetermined time for our game. Let's do an hour and a half. I can totally stay away from my phone for that long. Just kidding. 
45 minutes in, I get a text message, I'm out. I swipe in, I lose. The winner then gets points to, towards their talk profile. Those points don't sit there, they go towards real life rewards, like discounts and coupons to your favorite social venues, like bars and restaurants. Talk is for Generation Y. That 18 to 29 year old range, people who love tech, love social media, love to be inside their screens. We're the type of people who have Facebook listed as a skill on our resume. We need talk. So how do, how do we reach this, this entry market, this, especially college students? We, ho we host talk events. They're two to three hour social meetups where everyone's talking in the same physical space, face to face, not phone to phone. It's crucial, we can gain more interpersonal skills and we can better ourselves in when we need to network when it really, really matters. So also, in addition to talk events, we wanna partner with Eventbrite and Groupon. Both are companies that already believe in getting people outside of their pre-existing social circles and meeting new people. So let's not be the people anymore that check our phones 110 times a day. Professors, get your students back and paying attention. Parents, get your kids to look up during dinner. My orange friends, let's be human again. Let's talk. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lisa Kranz. I'm a sophomore music education tuba major at Setner School of Music. And I'm Melissa Bassett. I am a senior percussion major at the Center School of Music. What we want you to do right now is imagine Kelly, a senior in high school who is looking to come to Setner School of Music for college, but lives too far away to see the building or any of its performances. And now imagine Anthony. He graduated from the Setner School of Music many years ago and wants to stay connected and support the students and the school. But he lives too far away to attend any of the concerts. Next, think of me, a current student who performs often and whose family can't drive out every single time to see the concerts. Or then, think of all of the students who are studying abroad in many different countries, such as France, in our sister school in Strasbourg. They want to support their friends and colleagues, so how would they do that? Well, they would do that just like Kelly and Anthony would by a live stream program, live stream camera. And we do that at Setner Auditorium. Center Auditorium is a 19th century concert hall. It is listed and registered as a national historical place. It currently has a camera that has a microphone. It broadcasts all of our concerts and recitals to current students, prospective students, alumni, friends, families, and the community. Now, the problem with this is it's inadequate. It's not updated and it is out of our time. We are for the technology. It is for us to move forward into, th into the future. All right, so we propose to use the grant to help us update the technology in the auditorium. The money given to us will cover the majority of a cost of a camera, but there is so much more to it than that. This is going to be the first step of a huge renovation that Setner Auditorium would love to do and Setner School of Music would love for their students. This will be a great opportunity to push our school into the future and show the world how great we are. So we'd like to thank the committee, our new chancellor, and everyone from Setner School of Music, every student that it has ever held, and for me and Melissa personally. Thank you for this, and congratulations to all other grant winners. This program, our program, it is a nationwide, campus-wide, a worldwide program that will put Syracuse to the world and world to the Syracuse through music. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi there, everyone. Um, so we all know that comedy is king. We all love to laugh. We all love laughing with each other, talking with each other about funny things. And it's very true here at Syracuse, too. The spirit of comedy is very much alive in this campus. On no other campus across the country are there so many groups producing as much uh, online video content as there is at Syracuse University. So I, I've always been involved with comedy here. I was the executive producer of a group called Humor Horror on campus. Um, I learned a lot about video production, management, everything, but there's one thing that I did find out is just how tough it is to get your content out there. Um, we produce a lot of great material that has gotten a lot of views on YouTube, but we want everyone in the world to see it. You know, it's got a lot of coverage here on the campus, but not 
too much outside of there. And other, other groups on campus also agree with me. Enter the idea for the Q's Comedy Collective. The Q's Comedy Collective is a single website that connects all of the group's websites and their content on a single distribution network. It's built on three pillars. The first is to promote and unite all of the groups on campus under a single united entity. Um, like I said, to promote, the com uh, to promote all of our video content. Uh, the second is to foster a community amongst the groups. Uh, in Hollywood, there's a huge com uh, community and everyone's kind of connected out there. So we want to create that network inside of Syracuse where we have people who can share ideas, talent, uh, equipment, you know, actors and actresses, whatever we can do to really improve our content. And uh, thirdly, it's to encourage a professional workflow through creating uh, organized weekly uh, content release schedules. We'll be able to, you know, in kind of mock up a how it is in the real world where you have release schedules that come out on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of it is to kind of get our work out there. Um, yeah, so on, on board right now, we have several groups on campus. One is called Humor Horror, which I mentioned that I was executive producer of. Another is the Kumquat, a satirical news website. And uh, there's also Jersey to Syracuse, a newer group, Float Your Boat, a sketch comedy group, and another group that I'll be working with in the fall. Uh, that'll be a late night uh, comedy show, a uh, late night talk show, really. All this group's content will be connected, and uh, we, we hope to get the website up and running within the next few months. And also just keep in mind to keep us out, keep an eye out for us on Facebook, because that's a great place to search for us in the first place. Um, and lastly, I just want to thank the committee for giving me this opportunity, uh, my friends for making this possible, and the chancellor for this great idea. I really love what you're doing here. I love that you're trying to step into the students' uh, shoes, and it's really showing. And please don't stop sending those emails now that you're officially inaugurated, because we love them. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ali Curtis, and I am the former student body president here at Syracuse University. Hello, everyone. My name is Adriana Cam, and I am the current Board of Elections and Membership Chairwoman for Student Association. So given me and Adriana's experience in leadership here on campus, we have experienced firsthand the adversity and the different challenges that women face when they're in leadership. And with the advent of the Ban Bossy campaign and the Lean In campaign, we realize that now is the time to address and alleviate the issues that are unique to women in these positions, which is why we started the Leading Ladies Women's Empowerment Movement. We are trailblazers. One of our favorite trailblazers is Eleanor Roosevelt. In fact, we live by one of her most famous quotes, do one thing a day that scares you. And we want to inspire other women leaders to embody that sentiment and lead fearlessly. So last fall, we started this movement with five women leaders on campus. Today, that number has grown to 75 female student leaders here at Syracuse University, and that number is still growing. The Syracuse University Student Association passed a resolution just one week ago to support women's leadership programs. The resolution is being replicated by college campuses across the nation. Last Saturday, we hosted here at SU the Elect Her training program to get women involved in political leadership in college and afterwards. We have brought notable speakers to campus such as Mayor Stephanie Miner and Councilwoman Jean Kessner. Just last Monday, our movement got the front page of the Daily Orange. News Channel 9 and Syracuse, Women's Mag and Syracuse Women's Magazine have already covered our movement. In fact, MSNBC just launched a campaign to cover women in politics on college campuses who have been doing an extraordinary job across the country. Syracuse University was the first campus to be profiled. This movement has caught on beyond the hill. As a future educator, I work closely with our next generation of leaders as an intern at one of our nearby middle schools. From my experience, I've already seen how gender construction has diminished young girls' confidence and hindered the development of that trailblazer spirit. And we already know that there's a demand for women's leadership training here on this campus. So the first step of our proposal is to provide more for our rising student leaders here on campus through a series of workshops and leadership opportunities by having speakers here. Now once we have that reinvigorated cohort of women student leaders here at Syracuse University, we're going to mobilize them to get them involved with the second half of our proposal. We will host a workshop for our local middle school and high school students to discover their potential and equip them with the skills they need to lead. Now this is where the grant money comes in. Of course, we need to have some help with the logistical resources, having tech, setup, food, and even that kind of transportation to get students up onto the hill from our local middle schools and high schools. The Leading Ladies Movement is moving full steam ahead and growing exponentially with our momentum. While we are on the forefront of universities supporting women's leadership, grant money will serve as a catalyst to keep us there. And Syracuse University has a rich history of being a leader and an innovator, so we invite you to get on board with the Leading Ladies and help us keep that trailblazing spirit alive. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Sierra Pizzola. I'm a freshman advertising major at Newhouse, and I'm here representing a new group on campus called Power in Numbers, or PIN for short. I want to start by saying thank you so much for this opportunity. I couldn't be more excited to share our ideas with you. PIN is more than another group on campus. It's a movement. We want to end homelessness and hunger, and we're starting in Syracuse. PIN was created three short weeks ago after many other members, including myself, returned from an eye-opening alternative spring break trip to Washington, D.C. In just 21 days, we've gained 60 members, welcomed an entrepreneur with a similar passion as our mentor, and reached out to several local organizations for support. We believe that the first step to changing the world is education, and that's our goal. We want to educate Syracuse University students about homelessness and hunger going on in the community. And that's where you come in. We would earmark the grant to host our first annual event this October because we believe that it'll have the biggest impact in the shortest amount of time. The event will educate students through volunteer service and serve as a fundraiser for future PIN volunteer activities. Our main simulation will be a 30-hour famine. Each participant will seek out donors to sponsor them for the event. During the 30 hours, participants will not eat. Instead, they will spend time working together to make a change. They will take part in volunteer activities like working in soup kitchens and food pantries. They will also hear from a guest speaker who will empower them to go out and make a change. At the end of the 30 hours, we will provide participants with a meal. Those preparing the meal will be given $1.50 to spend for every person attending. This is the amount of money that the average family living below the poverty level has to prepare dinner for each of their family members every night. This event will empower students to take action against homelessness and hunger and show them that they can make a difference. I am so proud of the accomplishments that this group has made in a matter of three weeks, and this is only the beginning. I'm proud to announce that two very successful Syracuse alumni have verbally agreed to match the amount of money that we received from the Fast Forward grant. We are very grateful to the Suit Corp Corporation for having faith in our movement, our goals, and seeing our true potential. We are proud to be Syracuse students that are a part of a movement to end homelessness and hunger. Thank you again for the opportunity to share our ideas, and congratulations, Chancellor Sibarud, on your inauguration. We're so happy to have you as part of our Syracuse family, and thank you for helping us change the world. Hello, my name is Brian Chung, and I'm a finance and broadcast digital journalism major. My fast forward idea comes from two issues that I've seen, one on campus and one off campus. Syracuse University offers a wide variety of meal plans, and most freshmen are required to have a meal plan if they live in university housing. As freshmen, you're limited to the 14, 19, and deluxe 21 meal plans. Now, we all know as, as college students, your eating schedule is not exactly consistent. So between running from class to class during lunch or just skipping breakfast to make up on lost sleep, and we've all been there, most students just won't use up all of those meals. These meals are counted by the week, and every Wednesday night, those meals were set. Any unused meals will vanish into thin air. You either use it or you lose it. Personally, I had the 19 meal plan during my freshman year and didn't use about the three meals a week, although I did get my freshman 15. I've heard it said among many other students that they just have wasted meals. Now to the off-campus concerns. I am the president and founder of Circle K, a community service organization dedicated to service projects and fundraising in the city of Syracuse. My involvement with the club, in addition to independent volunteering, has taken me to the food pantries of the Rescue Mission, to the kitchens of the Samaritan Center, and to the dining rooms of the Salvation Army. The people I've talked to agree that there is a need for food in the local community, as many living under difficult situations struggle to make ends meet, to feed themselves, and in many cases, their families. I, along with other students, have felt the inequality of this situation when we struggle to eat all of the meals we have on our plans, while people in the city struggle to eat at all. My fast forward idea is this, Swipes for Syracuse. Let's bridge the gap between food consumption at the university and in the city by informing students every Wednesday night on how many meal swipes they have left in their plan for the week and if they want to donate one meal to charity. That one meal will be converted into monetary value and used to buy canned goods for local food pantries. And it's also flexible, so if the food pantries are well stocked, we can buy perishable meats or bread for immediate use or hygienic products, toiletries, or anything else that these organizations need. Since the announcement and publicity of the Fast Forward winners, local community centers have already expressed support for the idea. Through Swipes for Syracuse, the city will be one step closer to tackling hunger. 
The university will continue to commit itself to connecting itself closer to the city, to the city community and engaging students in the spirit of charity and volunteerism to the people that really need it the most. It could also start a dialogue on sustainability and food consumption on campus. Through Swipes for Syracuse, students will be able to actively even the distribution of food so that wasted meals become someone's much needed dinner. It's a great and easy way to tackle the inequality in the city. All it takes is a yes when you swipe into the dining hall on Wednesday night. So thank you so much to the chancellor and to the committee for hearing this idea. And that is my fast forward idea. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rue. I'm Jonathan Anthony. And I'm Tiffany Pau. We're all second years in the School of Architecture. So we're part of this organization on campus called Freedom by Design that provides safety and accessibility to the local community through good design. What do we mean by good design? Well, to us, it means providing a multifaceted solution to critical problems in the local community. We incorporate not only a high level of aesthetics and functionality in our designs, but what distinguishes us from any professional architecture firm is that we are volunteering our time and efforts to help enrich not only the community at large, but also the practical aspect of our architectural education. So often do architecture students find themselves confined to their desks, working in a digital zone that isolates them from the socio-political issues in the real world. By engaging design and construction with these variables early on in our careers, we hope to graduate with a transdisciplinary approach to solving architectural problems. Our organization has designed three ramps and a treehouse in the past. The treehouse called Play Perch is our most recent project and is for mentally and, dis mentally and physically disabled ch elementary children from Giovanni Elementary School here in Syracuse. This project has received recognition from notable architectural websites and has won several awards. When our current client, Reverend Simmons from Westminster Presbyterian Church, came to us, our students we're eager to design a solution for the many challenges specific to the church and specific to Syracuse. So what are these challenges? Imagine you're a regular Sunday mass attending member of the Presbyterian Church that recently got into an accident that unfortunately confined you to a wheelchair. You wish to keep going in the winter, but the ever harsh snowstorms of Syracuse, combined with icicles that form at the back entrance of the church, on top of a lack of accessibility, prevent you from even attempting to go in. You are very distressed, but luckily you find that there is a team that has successfully solved similar problems in the past. When you approach this group of students, they not only promise an alternative design that solves all your accessibility and weather problems, but also promises to create a community gathering space with a barbecue area and fold-out seating with the promise to fundraise the entire 9500 for construction. We drew the first conceptual sketches on trace paper, which transformed into a ramp, which not only folded out and up to shelter people from icicles, but also from unwanted street solicitation in the area of North Syracuse. We just finished our construction documents and came back from a meeting with the permit office. We have raised $8,000 from a student professor's talent show, our crowdfunding pitch, and from a design competition. With the help of the chancellor, his grant gets us to our goal of 9500 We've come a long way and gathered invaluable experience that usually only professionals in our field are able to gain. But we still have the last stretch to go, and we're so thankful to be here today to present to you our architectural vision. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Timmy Komoinibo. I'm a graduate student here at Syracuse University. I'm also the founder of an organization called Style Lottery. Style Lottery is an organization that promotes sustainable fashion and fashion philanthropy. Have you ever walked into your closet and thought to yourself, oh my gosh, I have absolutely nothing to wear, knowing good and well you have a full closet full of clothes? Well, I'm somebody who grew up with two sisters, and I enjoyed the luxury of having multiple closets to shop in. And we had something called an open closet um, policy, and so whatever you saw, you could take. So I wanted to bring that same experience here to the Syracuse University. With Style Lottery, we host events called Closet Swaps, where people bring five or more gently owned items, gently used items, and they swap them at the event. And our rule is, as long as you can carry it out of the room, you can take it. So what we do is we are encouraging people to practice more sustainable fashion. Following the trends often is an insustainable way to to kind of approach fashion. So when you swap with us, you're reducing your carbon pr footprint one swap at a time. At the end of all of our closet swaps, any, any items left over are donated to women in the community. And so when you're swapping with us, you're giving to women uh, in the community. 
this swap idea started out really small. I live in the Westcott area, and so I would throw swaps in my living room, and it got to the point where I couldn't fit 50 women in my living room anymore, and so we had to expand it. And we didn't want to be selfish with this opportunity, so we brought it to the university campus. With the help of the Fast Forward Award, we will be able to buy racks, hangers, and tables so that we can make our clothing swaps more accessible to more people in the community. We want to impress on people the importance of using fashion and fashion sustainability because simply buying clothes over and over again and throwing them away is not sustainable because away really is a place. It's simply just moving clothes to a different zip code. So at Style Lottery, we say that you should restyle, reuse, and reward with your clothing. Come swap with us. Thank you. Um, I'm Madeline Minakosi, a first year industrial design student. Um, my pitch is to reinvent the Mount Steps. Every day, I, along with a thousand other students, make this long trek up to the Mount. And when I make my long and sad trek up to the Mount, <laughs> I see broken panels, chipping gray paint, and nails scattered on the ground. I smell garbage. And I'd like to change all this and transform the negative perspective of the Mount. I want to do this in a two-part plan. The first part would be a general cleanup of the area within and outside the Mount Steps. And the second part of the plan will be to create a mural that will stretch from the bottom of the stairs all the way to the top. Um, I've had many inquiries about what this mural will be of. And after giving it a lot of thought, I decided that uh, it should be made by a team of students, each submitting a design. Uh, these designs will be looked over by myself, along with the two enthusiastic and supportive faculty members who are helping with this project, Sam Van Inken and Jude Lewis. And we will decide which ones are most appropriate. Um, after brainstorming a lot about what the mural should be of, I decided that it doesn't have to be painted bright orange or have images of Otto to represent what Syracuse University is. By having all of these different designs, we're capturing two of the biggest characteristics of Syracuse University, which are creativity and freedom, and the coming together of ideas to have a single unit. Um, these stairs foreshadow the possibilities that the university holds and create a community on the Mount that can be united for a long time to come. So, thank you. Awesome. Hi, my name is Sally Zay. And I'm Ryan Pearson. And we are the creators of Park Bar, a modular seating system made with sustainable materials. A year ago, Sally and I entered an international design competition held by Design Museum Boston. After weeks of sketching, sleepless nights, and constant prototyping, Park Bar was born. With its innovative design and use of sustainable materials, we were selected as finalists. We were also part of a public exhibit in South Boston. We got a lot of positive feedback from the residents of South Boston about its multi-use functionality and its aesthetics. So naturally, we wanted to bring it back to Syracuse. So far, we have one Park Bar in Kiv Kubal in its Marshall Square location. This design features a modular leg, which allows Park Bar to be as many seats as we want in any configuration. This means we could have a two-seat one or one that could wrap around the whole campus. As SU students, we know how popular the quad can get when the weather is nice out and when we're finally able to come out of hibernation. Our peers go on the quad to study, relax, work, and eat with their friends. On a beautiful day, like yesterday, the quad becomes the center of student activities. It's really the place to be. And people like to go there because they can be productive but still feel like they're connected to the SU community. Plus, studies have shown that people working outside in the sunshine improves their mood and their focus. The problem is there aren't any good surfaces to work or eat. So students tend to just sit on the ground because the current traditional benches available on the quad are only just good for sitting. So our solution is to put two four-seat park bars onto the quad. With uh, $1,500, that would allow us to buy our materials, get the metal frames welded together and powder coated, and turn old reclaimed lumber into beautiful wooden tops and seats. We want to encourage SU students to be outside more, to be productive, and spend more time together. And we think the functionality of Park Bar will foster these activities, while the materials will allow the students to reflect on the Syracuse University's connection with the city of Syracuse and its long history. In the past, we've uh, created Park Bars out of reclaimed wood from the Case Supply Building here in Syracuse, as well as from a barn that came down in my hometown in Vermont. 
we uh, would like to use reclaimed wood for these two new park bars uh, to keep our vision of sustainability in view. These park bars won't only just be a comfortable place to sit, but the materials will tell a story of reuse, regrowth, and share the bond between the city of Syracuse and our great school. Park bar. It's modular. It's sustainable. And it should be on the quad. Thank you. Congratulations <laughs> to the new chancellor. So the, the issue. On, uh, in Onondaga County, on a given day, there are over 400 men or women who experience homelessness. Now, the, the reasons are varied, obviously, but two overarching themes is a lack of affordable housing and a lack of long-term case management support. So those are two bears of issues, but I really don't think they're insurmountable. Now, now my dream is tiny homes, big hearts. And just, just imagine a 150 square foot home about the size of a Volkswagen Beetle neatly placed on the vacant lots in Syracuse that have kind of epitomized the inner city Syracuse historically. Now imagine each home with electricity, with hot water, with a heating system. And then imagine each home stocked with long-term case management support. It's, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? Now, how to make that happen? It's kind of crazy, right, to think that someone could live in a, a space smaller than what most of us use to drive to work. Um, but I'm here to, to kind of prove that that's possible. So while on the back end, I, I find the resources in, and provide the case management support, we'll prove it by building it on a trailer. So the plan is to use the fast forward grant money to finish our construction of the first home that's on an 88 square foot trailer. Once uh, Tiny Homes Big Hearts is established, we'll then move the trailer and place it on the permanent property. Soon after that, the first man or woman will move in and they'll be supplied with a case management service ready for them. This is the first home that'll hopefully uh, be a model for how to best house the 400 that are facing homelessness here in Syracuse. Now, chronic homelessness is, it's a bear of an issue, as I said, but I really think that this is an innovative and good strategy to make this work. And before I finish, I'd like to offer a sincere, sincere thank you to Jack Becker, Zed Jalini, Dolphus Johnson, and Dan Katz, the four men who helped me put this project together. Also a sincere thank you to the Chancellor for putting this together, um, to the dozens who made the Fast Forward grant possible, and finally to the likely hundreds who have made today possible. It's a wonderful event and really happy to see Syracuse. So great, take care and enjoy the rest of the day. Hi there, I'm Phil. And my name's Yan. And we are two of the 14 community ambassadors for the Office of Off-Campus and Commuter Services. Each year, we are tasked with making the transition to off-campus living e easier for students and also creating a connected and comfortable off-campus community. In order to build on our work from year to year, this year the CAs have begun a group initiative where we will aim to create a permanent improvement for the off-campus community. And this is why we are here talking to you today. The CA Bench Project aims to implement eight benches on the Euclid Avenue, which is one of the main streets of the off-campus community. We, play, we plan to place these benches next to bus stops and other high traffic areas. Our, our initiative will fulfill two main objectives. One, beautification, and two, connectivity. Currently, our off-campus lacks artistic expression and appeal. Our benches will be commissioned by Brendan Rose, a local artist, that will help brighten the streets of off-campus. You may have seen Brendan Rose's works throughout off-campus through his unique trash cans, as well as downtown for his works titled The Hand and the Serpent. These, the back of these benches will all be uniquely designed and have different, and have different designs that will represent the different facets of Syracuse University. Furthermore, the bench will provide a common ground and new opportunities for, and provide new opportunities for the members of the off-campus community. Um, and these new found opportunities will help in new interactions that will bring together the 10,000 permanent and student residents that call this area home. So the community ambassadors have already put in a lot of work to uh, get this project underway. Currently, the Department of Public Works for the City of Syracuse has already improved and supported our plans to install eight benches along Euclid Ave. Um, also, Brendan Rose has given, given us a preliminary design 
for each bench and given us a cost estimate for the price of each piece. Each bench will cost approximately $1,400 and we are asking for another $100 for a custom engraved plaque to recognize the donors. This first bench will be the start for the completion of our vision for this project and serve as a benchmark for any future supporters who, uh, who wish to watch our community grow. Um, each custom engraved plaque will recognize the donors either from the city of Syracuse or the greater SU community that wish to donate funds to help the CA Bench Initiative complete its goal. Um, additionally, these donors will also be able to give input to the unique design for the back of each bench. In closing, uh, this grant provided by the Fast Forward Competition would be able to complete the first stage of our project, propel us into the final phase, and ultimately serve as a means for creating a connected and creative off-campus neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to now invite all of our presenters back up here to the stage. You did a phenomenal job. I would like to give them a massive round of applause. Come on up. Thank you.